I wanted to thank all of you guys for coming. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to really thank all of you guys for coming today. It's just so inspiring to see such a great turnout. Um, so I'm going to do a little something different here because, well, you'll see. Okay. The Holy Land Foundation, um, once the largest Muslim charity in this country, um, was shut down in December 2001. My father was sentenced to 65 years in prison in May of 2009. But this story began actually way before the new millennium began. In fact, the earliest public accusation investigation um, of the HLF actually took place as early as 1993. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later, but I'd like to begin by introducing you to one of the main characters of this narrative, the co-founder of the Holy Land Foundation, my father, Ghassan Alashi. And I'm going to do that by reading a small section of my memoir in progress that I feel really illustrates my father, um, his personality, and his sensitivity toward human plight. So, here we go. Throughout the 1990s, when we were under FBI scrutiny because of agenda-driven reports linking Baba to terrorism, he reminded me multiple times about the sacrifice that every major immigrant group had endured, including the Germans, Jews, Irish, and Italians. The Japanese lost everything, he'd say, throwing his, arm, his hands in the air. A lot of them were American citizens by birth, but that didn't matter. They were enemy aliens, so they were rounded up in tents. They lost their jobs, their homes, everything. Baba understood his constitutional rights and utilized them to express himself. One day, a year before his imprisonment, I saw him in our garden, dressed casually with a camera around his neck. I asked him where he was going, and he said he was planning to march around downtown Dallas to protest the immigration bill that was being debated in Congress. He asked if I wanted to join him, but I told him that I had work. Later that night, he told me that I missed a great moment in American history. See for yourself, he said, proudly flipping through the pictures on his digital camera. We shared a passion for photography, but his lighting was impeccable, and his subjects were hardly ever posed. These pictures captured the vibrant ambiance of a united cause. There was nothing like it, he said referring to the river of half a million people pouring down the streets of the otherwise non-pedestrian downtown Dallas. He too wore white and waved the Mexican flag. He too chanted, Si se puede. So that's sort of kind of a little background. Just I wanted to introduce you guys to my dad just to get to know him and that's who he is in a nutshell. Um, and I'm going to address a few questions that I feel like would help you comprehend my father's case, why the charity was pursued, why he was so passionate and outspoken um, about, the Palestin about Palestinian oppression, and what drove him to open the, the Holy Land Foundation. Starting at the beginning, my father is the son of a Palestinian woman. Um, my paternal grandmother, who was expelled from her newly built two-story house in Yaffa, or Jaffa, in 1948. My grandmother became one of the hundreds of thousands of displaced Palestinians, leaving, as she always told me, her home furnished with food in the pantry, laundry swaying on the backyard line, leaving family birth certificates, photographs, books, and her new sewing machine, leaving her land, her heart, her home. My father, too, was displaced from his city of birth in Gaza, Gaza City in 1967. He immigrated to the United States in the late 70s, earned his master's degree, got married, and then in 1987, the Intifada, or uprising, erupted in occupied Palestine. It was a time, he told me, when Palestinians had lost all hope a time when the military occupation and e economic deterioration had reached the limit. A time when families demonstrated in the streets, 
praying that their cries will be broadcasted all over the world. To my father, to ignore these cries would have been to deny his own plight, his own vanishing history. <coughs> he could not ignore the need, the humanitarian crisis. My father's determination to relieve the suffering of the Palestinians is what, is what inspired him to co-found the Holy Land Foundation. The charity, which was launched in Culver City, California, Southern California, in 1989, and relocated to Richardson, Texas, which is near Dallas, in 1991, quickly gained status, providing relief to Palestinian, Palestinian refugees, as well as the needy populations in Bosnia, Albania, Chechnya, and Turkey. My father and his colleagues also provided assistance in the United States, opening a food pantry in New Jersey, helping victims of Texas tornadoes, Iowa floods, even victims of the Oklahoma City bombing. The HLF soon became the largest Muslim charity in the United States, and I'm going to keep emphasizing that because it's a huge reason of why this charity was persecuted. So when you ask the question, why had my father been vilified? Well, the Holy Land Foundation was rising to stardom in the eyes of human rights activists worldwide who had witnessed this charitable organization alleviate poverty in occupied Palestine by providing boxes of medicine, bags of rice, backpacks and books for needy children, a small group of individuals like New York politicians here in New York, and pro-Israeli lobbyists saw HLF's strength as a threat. They wanted Palestinians to remain weak and desolate, so they began pressuring the Justice Department and eventually the Bush administration to shut down the HLF. Bush made his announcement on national television three months after 9-11, and evidently, right around the time he met with then Prime Minister of Israel, Ariel Sharon, on December 4th, 2001, President Bush stepped to the mic at the White House Rose Garden, calling the HLF another important step in the financial fight against terror. Money ra raised by the Holy Land Foundation is used by Hamas to support schools and indoctrinate children to grow up into suicide bombers, he said. The language he used did not seem American to me. It sounded to me like Israeli logic. Two and a half years later, the indictment was released. What's interesting at this point is that the administration's narrative actually changed. After reviewing thousands of wiretapped phone calls and hundreds of thousands of financial documents, prosecutors could not find one piece of evidence linking HLF to Hamas, so they altered the accusation. Attorney General John Ashcroft made the bizarre claim that the HLF sent money to Palestinian Zakat committees, this material support, in the form of charity, which these Zakat committees are legitimate charitable institutions in Palestine recognized by Israel. His claim was that these Zakat committees allegedly were controlled by and worked on behalf of Hamas, and therefore, the Holy Land Foundation was helping Hamas in that way. The most bizarre argument. 